Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about algorithm analysis. The algorithm analysis is the investigation of an algorithm's efficiency with respect to two resources. The first one is the algorithm's running time, and the second one is the memory space used by the algorithm. In order to quantify these two aspects or these two resources, we'll be using two different terms. The first one is time complexity, and the second one is space complexity. The time complexity refers to the amount of time an algorithm takes for completion. That is the total time that algorithm takes for completion. The second one is the space complexity and that refers to the amount of memory units required by the algorithm in addition to the space needed for its input and output. That means how much extra amount of memory is the algorithm consuming in order to find the final result other than the input size and the output size. In order to get an idea of these two terms, I have shown two different for loops over here. If you look at the first for loop, here we have two integer variables and the first one is i, the second one is n. The variable n is assigned with the value 100. Then I am running a for loop for i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus, then printing the string hello. You know that this for loop will be printing the string hello 100 times. Okay. Let's assume that each and every operation involved in, in this particular for loop or in this program segment takes one second. In order to declare a value in i, let's assume that the computer takes one second. And for this operation, let's assume that the computer takes one second. In for loop, I am initializing i equal to zero, that may take one second. Then we are comparing i less than n. If that is true, then it will be printing the string hello, then it will increment the value of i. So when you analyze this algorithm, you can see that this will be running around 101 times and this will be running 100 times and this string will be printing or this statement will be executing 100 times. Okay, And if you calculate the total time, you can see that it will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 101 plus 100 plus 100. Okay. Suppose that I am changing the value of my input, let's say n is equal to 200. Then the new value of time for the completion of this program segment will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 201 plus 200 plus 200. So you saw that as the value of n changes or as the value of n increases, the time also increases. If you generalize these values, then I can write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus. Then this will be n plus 1 plus n plus. So this will be equal to 4 plus 3n. So in other words, the time it takes to completion is proportional to the value of n. Here I am writing the time in terms of the value n or the input n. So the time it takes for completion is proportional to the input size or n. And if you look at this particular program segment, you can see that you have a nested for loop inside a for loop. Both of them are running for n times or 100 times. This for loop will run 100 times for every iteration of this for loop. So if this for loop runs 100 times, then total you can see that the statement will be executing for around 100 into 100 times. So this program segment takes a time in proportional to the square of the input size. So in the first case, you saw that time for completion is proportional to the input size n. And in the second case, you saw that the time for completion is proportional to the square of the input size. So there is a huge difference between these two functions. Now let's look at different functions that may emerge as the time taken for completion of an algorithm. Here I have listed several terms or several functions which can possibly be the time taken for completion of an algorithm. The first one is a constant operation. That is constant operation takes constant amount of time irrespective of the input size. For example, if you want to add an element in front of a linked list, that is an algorithm that takes a constant time because you don't want to do anything iteratively or you don't want to traverse the linked list to the end because you are adding the element in the front. So it will take some fixed number of steps so that doesn't depend on the input size. So the second term is n that is a linear time complexity which means that the time for completing an algorithm is proportional to its input size. So an example for that is finding an element using linear search. You know that in linear search, we will be traversing along the array until we find the element required. And if it is not found, we'll be returning null or some invalid index. The third one is a log n or the logarithmic time complexity. One example for logarithmic time complexity is finding an element using binary search. 
The next one is n log n or the linear logarithmic. An example for a linear logarithmic algorithm is sorting an array using merge sort. And the next one is n square that is quadratic time complexity. An example for such an algorithm is sorting an array using selection sort. Next one is the n cube or cubic complexity. An example is matrix multiplication. If you have two matrix of size n by n, then time taken for finding the product of those two matrices will be proportional to the cube of the dimension. Then the next one is the exponential time complexity or 2 raised to n. If you have n elements in the input, then the time taken for completion of that algorithm will be in terms of 2 raised to n. An example for such an algorithm is finding the power set. Power set means, for example, if you have two different elements in an array, then the power set of this particular array will be null, then a, then b, then a, b. Okay. We are finding all the combinations that can be found by taking this. That is, we are finding all the combinations by taking the elements of this particular input a, b. So here you have two inputs or you have two elements in the input and the output has two raised to two, which is equal to four elements. In an algorithm which takes exponential time complexity, if you have the input size as 2, then the time for completing that algorithm will be in terms of 2 raised to 2 equal to 4. Similarly, if you have 3 elements, then the time taken will be in terms of 2 raised to 3, which is equal to 8. Okay. So this is the case of an exponential time complexity. Next one is the factorial time complexity or n factorial. An example for such an algorithm is computing all different words that can be formed from a given string. So that means if you have a word a, b, can have a permutation like this a b then the next one will be b a okay. you have the input as 2 so there are two factorial equal to two different outputs similarly if you have three different values a b c then the different words or different permutations that can be found out of this string will be the first one will be a b c then you have a c b then you have b c a then b a c then you have C A B and C B A. So in total you have six different possibilities. So this six is a result of three factorial. If you have the size of the input as n, then the factorial will be three factorial, which is equal to six. That is an example for an algorithm which computes its output in factorial time. You might have noticed that when you take the size of the input, that depends on the context of that algorithm. In this case, it was the number of elements in the array in this case, it is the length of the string. In this case also, that is the length of the string. For the matrix multiplication, that is the dimension of the number of rows and number of columns in the matrix. Now, what are the peculiarity of these functions or these terms? In this table, I have given the relative sizes of those numbers or those functions with respect to different values of n. In the first diagram, I have shown a graph which indicates the growth of those functions. Suppose that if the input size is 10, then if an algorithm takes logarithmic time, then the algorithm will complete in a time proportional to 3.3. Similarly, if the size is 100, then the algorithm can be finished in a time proportional to 6.6. .6. Similarly, if you have a size equal to 10 raised to 6 or a million, then the algorithm takes only 20 time units or can be finished in 20 time units. And you can also see the case for different values. You can also see the case for different functions over here. If the algorithm time is proportional to n, then this is the corresponding time taken. If the algorithm time is proportional to n log n, then this is the corresponding time taken. And if you look at the values for 2 raised to n or n factorial, for a smaller change in the input size, the output or the time taken is varying very drastically. So this exponential time complexity or a factorial time complexity is avoided as much as we can because an algorithm of that time complexity cannot be run for a larger size of input. Even though the computers are getting faster and faster every year, you cannot run this algorithm in today's case. To get an idea about the size of these numbers, so I have given that it would take about 40 billion years for a computer making a trillion operations per second to execute 2 raised to 100 operation. Even though the computer performs a trillion operation in a second, if the input size is 100, then an algorithm will take a time of 40 billion years. So we will not be able to wait for such a long time. So if you can come up with an algorithm which solves the same problem in terms of log n, then you can complete it in 6.6 .6 time units or if it is in n log n, you can complete it in 
6.6 into 100 or, or 60 time units. So if you want to complete an algorithm with a quite reasonable amount of time, then it is better to have an algorithm which completes the operation in this time complexity. It is better to avoid the time complexity of 2 raised to n or n factorial. So I have given a graph here which gives an idea on how the time complexity varies with respect to the input. So here I have shown a notation of O. I will talk about it later. You just have to look at the function that is given inside the O notation. The first one is a constant time or 1 which will take a constant time irrespective of my input. So here I am varying my input and here I am varying the corresponding time complexity function. The next one is the log n. Log n is also varying very slowly. Similarly, you have a function or a linear time complexity that is varying with respect to the input linearly. Then you have a linear logarithmic. Then you have the n square. Then you have 2 raised to n and n factorial. And one point that you can notice from this particular graph is if you look at these two graphs, until this point, the value of n log n is smaller than the value of n. But beyond this, the value of n log n is becoming larger than the value of n. Okay. Whenever you analyze an algorithm, if you want to get the actual picture on how the time complexity varies, you have to find the algorithm's response for a larger value of n. Okay. So then only we will be able to compare those values. Okay. So if you look at this value of n factorial, the n factorial was the smaller among the Turistian or exponential or quadratic functions. But as we go beyond this point, the n factorial is taking over all other functions. Okay. So you have to find the algorithm's time complexity for a larger value of input size or n. There are three different types of algorithm analysis. The first one is the worst case analysis. The second one is the best case. And the third one is the average case. In order to get an idea about these kind of analysis cases, I will take an example of the linear search. In linear search, our aim is to find whether a given key or a given element is present in the array that we have. Suppose that I have an array here. And our aim is to search for an element in this array. So the algorithm of linear search goes like this. You will have an array A and you will have a key or an element that need to be searched. So you will be changing the index i from 0 to the size of the array minus 1. So we will have the array indices as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is you have 8 elements. So you will be changing the value of i from 0 through 7. Then at each step of the for loop, I will be comparing whether the element present in the index i is equal to my key. If that is the case, then I will be returning the index. And if I cannot find the element in this array, then this for loop will be exited without this return statement. Then we will be returning an invalid index indicating that the element has not been found. So in this case, I am returning minus. Let's assume that you are searching for an element 15. So when you search for an element 15, you will be comparing the element of this position with 15. That is not true. Then you will go to the next position. That is, so you cannot find 15. Then you go to the next one. You cannot find 15. So in the worst case, your element can be at the last position. So you will have to make n comparison. So in the worst case, your algorithm takes a time proportional to n. So I can write this one as big O of n. I will explain this notation. So in your worst case, the number of computations required will be proportional to the value of n. Okay. Now suppose that you are searching for the first element in the array. Suppose that you are searching for the number 9. In that situation, you just have to make only one comparison. In that comparison, if you have found that element, then you can return the index. So that is an example for the best case. So in the best case, you will be taking only a constant time or you can also write it as big O of 1. So it will be taking only a constant time in order to find the first element of my array. So this is the example for the worst case and this is the example for the best case. And the last one is the average case. Average of all possible time cases. That is all possible divided by number of cases. If the element is in the first position, you have to make only one comparison. Let's say time c. And if the number is in the second position, you have to make two comparisons. So it will be 2c, then 3c. And if the element is at the end, you will have to make n different comparison. So the time taken will be nc divided by, you have n number of cases. So you will be dividing it with n. Okay. So this is equal to c into 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, etc. up to n divided by n. 
so this is nothing but c into n into n plus 1 divided by 2 that is this is the sum of first n natural numbers divided by n so this will be equal to c by 2 into n plus 1 so you can write it as c by 2 into n plus c by 2 so this is a constant time this will not be contributing much to my running time so the time taken can be written as proportionate to n okay so this can also be written as big o of n okay so we have seen three different cases the first one is the worst case and the second one is the best case and the third one is the average case so these are different types of algorithm analysis that we can have in an algorithm i hope it is clear thank you